Let's play a game, a little something called two truths and one lie. Pretty self-explanatory, but I'm going to state two truths about myself and one lie, your job being to try and figure out what that one lie is. One, I very much dislike the cold weather. Two, when I was younger, I wanted to be a ballerina. And three, Michael Jackson is my aunt. Come on, is it that obvious? I know you're probably thinking I could have come up with a much better lie to make it hard on you. However, me leading you into believing that I'm a bad liar was a lie in itself, or was it? Dishonesty, fiction, slander, tale, deceit, fib, call it whatever you want, because truth is, we all do it. We lie, and are probably much better at it than we should be. But don't feel bad. Fellow liars, honorable judges, sometimes it's okay to lie. In fact, not only is it okay to lie, you're only proving yourself to be more intellectually advanced in the way your brain processes information. As a liar, you are the next step in human evolution. Let's say, for example, a friend asks, so, how do you like my new boyfriend? You are now holding two conflicting pieces of information at once, truth and lie. You can tell her that maybe he isn't exactly your favorite person, kind of annoying, actually. Or you can save yourself an emotional disaster as you are now the traitor who doesn't want her to be happy and instead act overjoyed in your friend's newfound romance. So now your job is to suppress the truth and then lie without showing that you indeed lied to her. Not an easy task on the brain. Now you're not only staying on good terms with your gal pal, but you've also just furthered yourself into human evolution. You see, lying is a sign of intelligence as it takes some thought to recognize the way things are and then create your own alternative to that reality. As researched and proven by the Society for Neuroscience, the world's largest organization for scientists and physicians dedicated to understanding the brain and nervous system, activity in the prefrontal cortex increases when you lie. It's a collection of regions responsible for executive control situated right behind the forehead. It controls the ability to regulate thoughts or actions to achieve a specific goal. It includes cognitive processes such as planning, problem solving, and attention, three components that help to make a lie work. When you're dishonest, your brain has to work a lot harder, and this is reflected in increased brain activity. See, lying is like being registered for Lumosity, except it's free. So why not take advantage of that? We're just trying to challenge our brains, something we're always encouraged to do in school. Now, pulling off a convincing lie hasn't always been easy. It's a product of human evolution. But thousands of years ago, the person who could tell the most convincing lie and manipulate their peers would often get the biggest rewards, such as the bigger portion of food from the hunting trip or even their pick at women. Over the years, we've gotten much better at it, and there can still be an advantage to being able to tell a successful lie. Now we often lie to create a better version of ourselves. Maybe not a whole new person, we've all told a little fib here and there to receive acceptance. I'm sure at some point, you've had somebody ask you, for example, if you knew a band they liked, and you said yes, without hesitation, even if it's not true. Maybe it's because you have a crush on them and you want to further connect, or you just want something to talk about with a new friend. They're white lies, a harmless little lie, usually with the intent of sparing someone's feelings, or that just won't have a grave impact on anything. Now, you might think you never lie, you're straight up in the truth, but according to a study conducted by the University of Massachusetts, with a t within a 10 minute conversation, adults couldn't even lie, couldn't even tell the truth through that without lying at least three times. 60% of adults lied three times within a 10 minute conversation. We lie to everyone, and truth is our parents probably get the worst of it. According to the day America told the truth, 86% of us lie to them regularly. Yet, these lies are about things that don't even matter, things that we think will make us more likable or to get us out of trouble. In fact, in a survey conducted by a British film rental company, 30% of respondents had lied about seeing The Godfather. Why would you lie about seeing a movie? To fit in, simple as that. You see, these lies don't hurt anyone, and they tend to help us keep conversation smooth without awkward social instances. Now, nobody can say they've never lied. Now, I'm not saying huge messed up ones where you make up a huge lie to receive pity and make friends or cheat on your boyfriend or girlfriend, but these little white lies are a natural thing to do. At six months old, you're already training yourself to do so as you cried in your crib to get your parents to take you out and hold you and console you. Now we just do it to avoid punishment, protect someone else, win the admiration of others, 
or to get out of an awkward social situation. All I ask of you is to not feel ashamed of lie you've told, but to instead embrace the naturalness of it. Because what's not a lie is that we all lie. And if you're particularly good at it, you've evolved, and you can thank your brain for being ahead of the game. Thank you for listening.